Hello and welcome in. My name is Mark, aka The Markster. This is video number three in the Free Cat series. If you haven't watched videos one and two, go ahead and watch them now because we're going to kind of gloss over some of the things that were covered in, in those first two videos. In the first video, we looked at downloading and installing FreeCAD. We looked at the online documentation and the wiki. We talked about getting help on the forum. There are a few tips on there. We covered some general navigation in FreeCAD. We talked about the Blender navigation mode. We talked about the combo view, the tree view, the property view. Python console report view. In the second video, we talked about using a spreadsheet. Actually, we covered the spreadsheet in episode one also. We talked about installing a macro. We In the first video, we made a pipe or tube to demonstrate the use of the part workbench cylinder primitives and the boolean cut operation. In the second video we made a funnel out of two cones and we used the fusion boolean fusion operation there. In this video we're going to demonstrate using an array, a draft array from the draft workbench. The array is a copy of objects arranged in some uh, pattern. It could be a polar pattern, in other words a circular pattern, and we're going to make a wagon wheel today. It's going to demonstrate that circular pattern. You can also use the array in a grid-like pattern such as with the pegboard, the holes in the pegboard. So let's go ahead and get started today. I've already created a spreadsheet for this and you can see I've already added the aliases. If this is not familiar with you, go back and watch those first two videos. So with a wagon wheel, we have a central hub, we have spokes, and we have an outer rim. Mainly we're here to illustrate the use of the array. We're not trying to make a perfectly exact wagon wheel. If you were actually modeling one, you would probably put a few more details or change things up <clears throat> a little bit. So let's go ahead and get to the part workbench. And I'm going to use a tube, which is a part primitive. We made a tube in video one to demonstrate the uh, use of the primitives, the cylinders, and the, and the cut boolean operation. But FreeCAD provides one for you that you can use uh, without having to make it. This tube is going to represent our rim. I'm going to rename that. Right click on it. Choose Rename. Let's call this the rim. We'll come down to the height property. Click the FX icon. SS.SS. .SS. Should be familiar with that if you watched the first two videos. And this will be the rim thickness. and the inner radius will be the rim inner radius 
and the room outer radius. So there's the rim of our wagon wheel. Now let's make the spokes next. The spoke will be made of a cylinder. We'll make one spoke and we'll use an array to create the rest of them. This rim will need to be rotated. Let's go ahead and set these parameters first. This is a spoke radius. Now the height of the spoke is going to be related to the rim radius. Let's go ahead and make that the average of the inner radius and the outer radius. So the spoke is lodged in the center of the rim. So we'll need to use some parentheses for that. We'll average them together, put them both in, and then divide by two. Rim inner plus outer divided by two. That will give us a spoke length that will reach out to the middle of that rim. We need to rotate it now. We'll do that with the placement. We'll rotate it at 90 degrees. Let's enter 90 here. Now, we're rotating around the z-axis by default. So we need to choose the y or the x-axis. Either one would work for us. Let's set the view from the top. And you see we have the spoke going to the middle of the rim. Now we need to array that spoke. Let's rename this to spoke. I'm going to press F2. Enter a spoke. We'll switch to the draft workbench. Part workbench does not have array functions, but the draft workbench does. Draft workbench, um, we're not going to cover it fully. I don't expect to anyway, but it has some really nice tools in it. And one of those is the array. In this case, we're going to use the polar array. This is the toolbar. This uh, toolbar icon creates both a polar and a rectangular array. So we'll have to select the type of array that we want in the array's properties. So the ortho array is the default. That's the rectangular or grid style. We want polar. Circular is new. I've never seen that one before. Not sure exactly. Not sure exactly what that does, to be honest. But I know what polar does. And we're going to need to choose the number of polar is how many spokes we want. This is a parameter already set spoke count to 8. Of course we can change that here in the spreadsheet if we want more or, or fewer. We'll set it to 5. And you see now it arranges them in that correct pattern so that they're evenly spaced. That's it for draft for now. We'll, we'll be spending some time in the draft workbench.
Now we need to make our hub, the central hub. We also need to move that array up so that it's in the middle of the rim instead of on the bottom. Let's go ahead and move that up with this placement property. Position on the Z in the Z direction will make it half of the rim height, rim thickness, half of the rim thickness. That'll put it in the middle. We don't want our spokes on one end or one side of the rim, usually anyway. And now we can make the hub, the central hub. This we're going to make using two cylinders because we need to cut. We need to cut in the middle here. We need to cut this out for our axle to go through. So we'll call this one the hub. And I'm just going to make it the same thickness as the rim, although in, with an actual wheel you'd want to make it probably stick in a little further towards the wagon to create some clearance. Or you might want it sticking out both sides. But we're mainly um, demonstrating the use of the array here in this video. So let's set the hub radius to hub radius. And we set the hub thickness to hub thickness too. And we just make sure those are the same as for the rim. Yeah, they're both 50. And now our, our spokes are centered. We can make it taller if we wanted to and it would stick in a little more. Let's make it 75. Okay, let's go with that. Now we need to drill our hole in the hub for the axle to fit through. We'll use another cylinder for that. Let's call this one hub core. And this radius, what do we call it? shaft radius and the height oops press the equals to bring up the expression engine the height will be hub thickness that's creating a potential problem with the coplanar faces let's see if it works if we can cut that out. Now we need to cut the spokes too. So let's fuse everything but the hub core into one object, one fusion object, and then we'll cut the hub core out of it. You can fuse two or more objects together. It does not have to be two objects. Cutting requires two objects, a base and a tool. The base, in this case, will be the fusion object. The base is the part that you're cutting stuff away from. And the tool is defining what is being removed. You select 
the base first, then the tube, then the core. The base first, then the tool. I'll get it right eventually. Press the control key on the keyboard to be able to multiply select more than one object. Otherwise, when you select the second object, it's just going to deselect the first. And then we'll use the cut. So that looks good. The, cut, the whole one all the way through. Sometimes with the coplanar face, you might end up with a, a really thin shell. In which case, you just need to make the cutting tool a little bit longer so that it sticks out on both sides. So that's our wagon wheel. And it is fully uh, parametric. We can change the number of spokes if we want more spokes. We can change the rim radius. I hope this will work. Let's go to 350. Let's see what that looks like. The key is the model will parametrically change its own shape and all the relevant parts will make it work. So this is a good general purpose model. But we can come in and very simply modify the parameters and get it exactly like we want it. If we had created this in a non-parametric manner without using the spreadsheet, it would be a lot more work to go in and make changes. And because it's more work, you might think of a change. Or I might prefer to have, let's say, eight uh, spokes instead of ten. If it's not parametric, you have to dig up into here and find the array and look through and find where the count is and change it there. And it's just a lot of trouble when you have a deeply nested model with a lot of different um, objects that are part of it to go in and find all of the different parameters. So having them in a spreadsheet in one central location makes it much easier. Um, let's imagine you had a business where you were let's say printing out little toy wagon wheels and you're the only one who knows CAD in your business but you can easily train another worker to come in here and just change these parameters and print out another wheel to the customer's specification without him needing to know much about CAD. So reusable models, they're useful in a lot of different ways. It's well worth the trouble, in my opinion, to go ahead and create the spreadsheet first and set up your parameters and make it parametric. You'll make better models. You'll be more inclined to make minor modifications because they're easier to do as opposed to having to hunt and peck and keep fixing the model because you're going to keep breaking it with each change. And it makes the model more reusable in the future. I don't think we're going to have time to work on a rectangular array. We'll save that for another video. So that's going to be it for today. Just a quick little simple model demonstrating the use of arrays and the uh, draft workbench. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and have a great day.